What class type can be used in financial calculations? So first of all, you have to remember, do not use double and or float in monetary calculations, where exact results of the calculation is expected. Because floating point calculation may not be exact. So, for example, if we have uh, such calculation, the double will produce this, while the big decimal, which is the recommended one, will produce this result. Okay, so big decimal, long and int is recommended for monetary calculations. And you have to remember that if you, if you construct a big decimal variable, use the string constructor, because the double one gives the same result, result as the double one. Why Java doesn't allow overriding of static methods? So overriding depends on having an instance of a class. A static method is not associated with any instance of the class, so the concept is not applicable. When is, the, when is it appropriate to use blank final variables? So the final property of a class must have a value assigned before an object is created. So the last point when you can assign a value is a constructor. This is used often for immutable objects. Uh, late binding. Okay, what is late binding? The late binding means that uh, let's let's have an example here. We have a uh, class A and class B which inherits from class A and both classes have methods defined. Um, so in class B the method is overridden yeah? and the problem here is that the compiler uh, doesn't know here which method from class A or from class B um, will be invoked here yeah? so because it looks only on the reference type yeah? so only at the time of the runtime uh, he will know which method to invoke yeah? so this is how, why we call it uh, late binding for the static what is the starting binding yeah? okay so we have uh, more or less the same example here class A and class B, which extends from A, but uh, let's assume here that we have this method when static. Yeah? So uh, if, if both methods are static, so in the same situation like in the late binding, the compiler knows exactly which method to invoke during the compile time because the static methods are not uh, overridden. Yeah? So that is, that is what we call the static binding. How to prevent using overloading instead of overriding by mistake? Yeah. So always remember to use the add override annotation on the, on the methods that you override. Yeah? So this will prevent you from the mistakes. How to store the passwords? Character array is a better choice than string for storing passwords. First, because strings are immutable in Java and if you store the password in plain text, it will be available in your memory until the garbage collector cycle. So, since strings are, string are used in a string pool for reusability, there is a chance that it will remain in your memory for a long time. So another thing is that anyone can access, uh, who can access uh, your memory dump can find the passwords in clear text. And that's the reason you shouldn't always use an encrypted password than the plain, uh, instead of the plain text. And also uh, when you use the character array, you can set the, all the, the whole password blank, yeah? each of the element of the array. How to write immutable class? Any modification must result in a new object. Yeah? So you would normally create a copy method which will create a new instance of the class. All fields should be final to, to not allow changing yeah, the values of the fields. 
the class must be fi must be final to restrict uh, to do not allow subclassing. If we have a final date data instance member, we should never return the reference outside of the class. And um, pros for the immutable class is that it's fresh safe, so you don't need the synchronization, so it's better performance. You can reuse them, so serving them from cache using a static factory methods. The problem here is that new instances create a lot of work for garbage collector. Yeah. How to copy an object? So we have, um, let's see the example here. We have, so the, in, this, um, in this constructor, yeah, we want to copy uh, from uh, the given parameters to our current object. Yeah. So in this situation, the primitive values are copied by values, so we don't have to worry about the, uh, how to copy it. Yeah? So it's, it will obviously be a value. Um, order status is also a string, so strings are immutable, so always uh, in this case uh, a new instance will be created and we will not use the, the one you know, uh, passed here. Yeah? And the same one for the description because it's string, but the last one is the list of strings, item list, parameter. So in that case, we need to make a deep copy of the list of the strings. So we need to copy each, uh, each element you know, between the, between the lists. So not, we do not want to use the, the referenced one, but we want to copy the values from this list to our list. Yeah? So in that, that is why we use the stream API and the collector to list. So the shallow copy copies the reference, not creating the new objects. Good, it is good for primitive and immutable members, yeah? so like here. But the deep copy, deep copy makes a new object which is good when we have uh, object members, like here. Um, one tip, you, we could also use the clone method, um, but it's not advised because we need to make sure that all the super classes up to the object class should implement the clone method as well. Okay, how to write the equals method. So we have the order class here with some uh, instance variables. And we have the equals method uh, with an object as the parameter. At the beginning, we compare this instance with the object provided. Then we compare the classes. And one tip, the get class comparison will return false if the class loader is different. Here we have the reference yeah, to the object provided. And here we go, we have the ID compared. Uh, plus order ID at the beginning. So this is the domain object ID. Then we um, we check if um, we check the order description here, or or we can use uh, simply the objects dot equals method yeah, for the strings for the order description to compare. For the enumeration. Yeah, Order status, uh, we can use the this comparator operator because it's the same and it's null pointer safe. And for the list at the at the end, we use the object equals. Okay, the default hash code of object returns the memory address for the object. We need to override the hash code if we override equals. Otherwise, we'll have duplicates. So for uh, two value, two values which are equal, yeah, uh, we will have two different hash entries in the hash map key set because it uh, uses the hash code method. Yeah? Um, so hash code uh, is the 32-bit integer value, value, there is always a possibility uh, of hash collision. Yeah, so, so that the sum hash codes are the same for two different objects. How to write the hash code method? 
So we can simply use the objects.hash method and put all the parameters here, or we can uh, do this uh, manually. Yeah? But I <coughs> recommend to use the second, uh, the second method. How to write the compare to method? So when overriding equals in Java, you must keep equals and compare to methods consistent. Why? Because the tree set and tree map uses this compare to method for sorting and area list uses this compare to for the sort method. So if compare to and equals are not consistent with each other, it will provide you provide to the duplicates, which will break set contract of not having the duplicates. Hash set uses equals to check dupli duplicates. Yeah, so um, if there is one element, it's okay. Yeah, but uh, tree uses uses compare to method to check the duplicates. So duplicate element uh, will not be okay. Yeah? Okay, uh, compare to must return a negative number if current object is less than other object zero if both are equal and positive if its current object is greater than the other object. Yeah? How to write the compare to method? So use the float compare to or double compare to for comparing float point numbers. Yeah? Start comparing from the most significant field to least significant fields. Uh, compare to must throw the null pointer exception if given object is null. That is that is something different than an equals method. What is the difference between the stateless bean versus the stateful beans and HTTP session? Stateless session beans are not tied to one single client, and there is no guarantee that one client will get the same instance with each method invocation. Although stateless beings may have instance variables, these fields are not specific to one client, so don't rely on them between the remote calls. HTTP, for example, is a stateless protocol, which means that it, it is actual uh, the actual transport protocol between the server and the client doesn't uh, save <coughs> state of this transmission. Yeah? So it remembers nothing between different invocations. Stateful session beans are dedicated to only one client for the entire life cycle of this bean. So there is no swapping or pulling of the instances. Yeah? This means that the instance variables of the bean can keep data relative, relative to the client, yeah? so between the method invocations, so you can remember some state. Yeah? And this makes the possibility to have interdependent method calls. Multi-step process, a registration process, a shopping cart, a booking process are typical use cases for stateful uh, beans. Yeah? HTTP session object can hold conversional state across multiple requests from the same client. In other words, it persists for an entire session with a specific client. We can use it to store everything we get back from the client in all the requests the client makes during the session. What is the difference between final and effectively final? So the local variable referenced from a lambda expression must be either final or effectively final. This second one means that the variable was never actually didn't have the keyword final at the definition, but the variable is never changed after it is initialized. So it means it's effectively final. That's it. Thank you.